Hey guys, what's happening? So, I have another 3D printer to fix here. Um, yeah, a customer bought this in a couple days ago. Um, we were trying to figure out this issue with this, uh, you know, it's a single drive. It's one of Creality's uh, direct drive setups, but the issue is it's only a single drive, and uh, it creates a lot of back pressure, so I have issues with it, you know, extrusion issues with it. So, uh, check everything, nozzle's good, but... Um, so we decided to get a dual drive. So originally I wasn't sure if I was going to do like a Bontech setup, you know, and, uh, you know, create like a custom extruder system for this thing. Because I do, I've created a couple of different extruder systems. It's on my thing of wrist page, but, um, but I looked at this, I was like, why, you know, they've already kind of solved the issue for Creality, at least it saved me a lot of headache. Um, it's pretty expensive. It's like $109. I'll put a link down below. But um, it's called the Sprite. And it's actually made by Creality. It's a pretty cool looking design. I'm actually pretty impressed. You know? Um, it comes with this ribbon cable. But the cool thing is it comes with all the different board connectors already, you know? So it actually replaced this main cable here going back. And uh, I've done a CR Touch upgrade a while back. And we upgraded the, the main board to the latest Silent Step technology. But one of the issues with the Creality boards is the EEPROM. There's no EEPROM on the boards. That's my only gripe with the, the Creality boards. So it comes with like the whole new wheel system. Um, okay, so I'm guessing... What's that? Why is that sideways? I'm trying to figure out where would I mount the... Um, I'm trying to figure out where, where would I mount the BL Touch. Um, yeah, because obviously you wanted to, if you if you if you move the BL Touch to a different location, then you have to modify it in the Marlin firmware. You, the Marlin needs to know where the, where the where the BL Touch is at. So hopefully I can. I don't need to mess with that too much. Hopefully that will because I think there's already an option for a BL Touch on here. So here it is. Here's the Sprite Two connector or Sprite Two system. Pretty cool. It's an integrated, uh, you know, dual drive setup. Um, NEMA 17. I'm not going to take it all apart. I mean, there's pictures online about it, but I'm just going to do a quick install. And I'm guessing this is a BL Touch connector. But a uh, little small fan down here. And if you guys have ever seen my, my custom extruders, I always say you don't need to. This is the exact same fan I'm using on my, my Orca extruder system over here. Uh, we designed that a few months ago. The fan right here is the same size. Like I always said, you don't need to overcool these things um, by adding weight with these massive, insane. Like some of these extruder systems you see on Thingiverse are having they're, they, they're they're adding weight by adding these huge fans they don't need. It's kind of unnecessary. Um, so here's the here's the the cooling block here right here. I mean, also it's a heater block, the cooling block, aluminum block here. Um, the only issues that I, I would say is that you know if they're trying to make it compact and space savings. They should have used a NEMA 14 motor. Um, I don't know if that's gear reduction or not. Yeah, it's gear reduction. Here's a gear. So I'd have to figure out the E-steps, but I'll go through that. So anytime, you know, there's a couple different ways you can modify the E-steps. Um, you, know, you could either do it from the LCD, which I'm going to do here because I don't want to custom do the software. Um, yeah, or you could do it in Marlin. But the E-steps is that the motor has to turn fast. Because it's a gear reduction, the motor has to turn faster you know, to keep up with Marlin. So if you're just running, if it's, if it's directly attached to the motor, it's usually around 95. But let's take a Bontech, which is three to one, it's like 415 E-steps. Um, okay, ribbon cable. I mean, this should be pretty basic setup, looks like it, so. Just moving wires around. Yeah, it did come with a... Some screws. Okay, extra nozzle, cool. Um, but I'm guessing this is for the BL Touch. I mean, that looks like a BL Touch cable. Well, in this instance, it's a CR Touch. So that would go like right there. But, all right, I'm gonna take this one off. I gotta pull the old wires out. He actually added an LCD wire here. He actually had a, a, a wire down. He does some other pretty cool mods too. Pretty basic, he's gonna take that three, loosen these two screws up, loosen the eccentric nut, pull the belt off. I ain't got the bracket on. All right, so I'm trying to figure out, this thing just held on by three screws. That's it, like right there, one, two, three. And another issue, I, I, well, I guess we'll see once I start messing with the firmware, but see how the BL Touch is way up here front? Normally in a stock one, it's over here. So width-wise, it's a little bit, compare that with a stock one. So normally the BL Touch would be 
kind of the same, but I, why, why in the Y direction? It seems like it would be the same, but it's probably about 30 millimeters forward. So that could represent a definite issue um, because it might probe too far out here, but I'll, I'll see. There might be a custom firmware for this thing. And the good news is it's like a stock Ender 3. So maybe there's a custom firmware for this actual uh, hot end. Yeah, it actually probably makes it, well, it was easier for me to take it back off and, and do the wire for the BL touch. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's what it was meant for, but I, I just fish it under here. All right, so maybe if uh, Creality's watching this, it would be nice as if you had a dedicated 12 volt up here so you could run a light up here. Um, you know, bring up 12 volts from the ribbon cable and then, you know, basically have like a JST connector off here and you could actually hook up with a light down here. As far as I know, I don't think this thing actually has an LED, but it's nice because when you're doing your first layer, you can kind of, it's easier to see the first layer. You don't have to grab a flashlight. All right, so now it's got to upgrade the uh, hot end here. And one thing I'm actually shocked to see is that Creality used ferrules on their connectors. They're always notorious for using soldered wire in there. Um, okay, so you have your hot end and then heat plus. So what they do is if you look at there's multiple wires, so distribute the load for the hot end, because if you just ran on one wire, it overload the wire and it'd probably overheat and melt. See, there's two wires going in here. Two wires going to each one, positive and negative. They do that to distribute the load. I mean, it's definitely not ideal, but I mean, to get it all in one nice ribbon cable, and hopefully you can buy these things in, in a couple of years. That's one of the issues, like sometimes when they get too crazy with this proprietary stuff, and I'm actually dealing with that right now, that this pro version of this um, CR10 Max is that everything is, they only made it for one year and it uses the same ribbon cable thing, you know? Is that the board is impossible to find, or if you can find it, it's crazy expensive. All right, so there's two connectors on this cable that don't actually have a label. This three pin JST connector, and there's another two pin right here. So I have no idea. I mean, I guess I could use my multimeter and try to figure out where they go. But uh, all I need, I need a, what, a hot end, a thermistor, BL touch, and the two fans. So this ribbon cable could definitely be well better well organized so you'd actually have the positive and negative fan right next to each other so it'd make it look cleaner but i have to separate them kind of like because this cooling fan negatives over here and the positive is all the way on the very end so it creates like a big gap between the different things so it's not it, it, it won't look as clean as it possibly could all right so the k cooling fan should be the uh right there uh, I don't really have a K, it should be like C, but um, that would be for like the layer cooling fan. Um, one of the things that sucks about these boards, these uh, Creality boards, even if this actually is the upgraded 32-bit board with Trinamic, I guess they call it the silent board, um, it doesn't actually have a pulse width modulated, uh, you know, cooling fan for the uh, hot end. So basically when your print is done, the fan will just keep on running at full speed, max speed. Whereas like other devices like... Uh, you know, they have a dedicated, uh, you know, controller pin. The fan will turn off and the printer will become silent once the print's done. All right, so that goes here. And so there, here are those two extra wires I was talking about that aren't labeled. So I don't know if that's for future stuff. Uh, like I said, that'd be nice to have a dedicated 12 volt, a constant 12 volt going up to the hot end for, for light. All right, so before I put this whole thing back together, I'm going to power it up, make sure I'm getting communication with the thermistor. I should see a reading on the LCD. And because this, well, the fan should kick on too, this cooling fan, um, just because it's not being, it's, it's a constant 12 volt always on. So that should come on, this one right here. And then, um, do, I'm going to test a hot end, make sure it goes up to temperature. And then, uh, once I can verify everything works, I'll even test the, the, uh, layer cooling fan. Then I'll put it all back again and we'll do a test print. Yeah, fire it up. All right, so... Getting 16 degrees on the hot end. And be able to talk to the getting light. Fan is on. All right, I'm gonna do a quick heat up. All right, so I know I have horrible light here. All right, we'll do a fan speed check. And then, let's say it, just, it doesn't make a difference with it. So as soon as I hit that button, that thing should tick on. All right, that works. Go back down to zero. 
and it's off. Okay. Um, all right, let's do a, sorry, I'm at a weird angle. I don't want to put it back together yet, so until I know it's dialed in. What's it, the preheat um, nozzle. I'll just go up to 50. Nope, not 260. Yeah, it goes by. Okay, let's do... The main... I know, this is a weird angle. <laughs> just want to make sure I'm getting power to it. Okay, so we're looking good. Okay, now it's time to do the E-steps. Um, so the E-step, like I said earlier, I was trying to describe it. That because this is gear reduction, the, this motor has to spin faster because it's, it's gear reduced. Now what that does, it gives you more torque on the drive gears. You know, the motor has to move faster, but then you have more torque. You know, so you, it's more torque on the actual fillet. Because if you don't, one of the issues like when you don't have a gear reduction is that you'll hear like a lot of skipping. Like if you're stepper current is too low and you have too much back pressure the stepper motor can't you know it can't push the filament through and you'll hear like all the clicking like the stepper motor will be going stepping backwards um okay so let's go down to what's it under uh, control motion so there's this this actually makes it easy but you can do it also and like if you're going to custom pile the software you would do this in Marlin. So they said uh, 424. I think the BL Touch is, I mean, that BMG Bontech is like 415 or something. Like I said, normally I do this in Marlin. I wouldn't do this here, these E steps, but most people aren't going to know how to custom compile Marlin. 224. Alright, so I'm going to auto hum this thing. And. Um, Normally, when this thing is configured correctly, the BL Touch, it will hit right in the center. Because it knows where the nozzle is, and it should know where this thing is at. So, I can already tell you that. I'm a little f too far to the right. It's going to have to come down. What I need to do is issue a G29 command and see where it actually probes the bed. And it might probe off the bed. That would be my concern. It's because... It, it thinks the, the the firmware thinks that this thing is back here, so it's going to go way far forward and go over the bed and probe like that. Oh, I forgot to show you the part, but yeah, the BL touch works. Went down, probed it, came back up. But this is actually the home position. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see an issue problem with that, but we are way far out. To the right and too far forward. Well, the good news is that this is actually a newer board, so if there was going to be a firmware file for it, it'd probably be easier to find. But it's it's difficult because every single board, I mean, they would actually have to compile. They'd have to create a firmware file for every single printer they have, and every single board they have, like the 8 bit boards and the 32 bit boards, and they all ran different drivers. It's it's version specific so each like 422 4227 they might run have they might have different drivers so they all have to be compiled for the specific driver where the BL touch is at the dimensions of the bed so there's a lot of stuff going on all right so here is the page so it does specifically say the energy pro um i see a download link here i mean i've already seen some files here okay XC firmware, we need the pro version. Well, you can tell if it's a, that if, if it's a, if you get a, if it's a hex file, then it's for an 8-bit board. If it's a bin file, then it's there for a 32-bit board. Okay, so I hope you can see that. There's, so there looks like there's one for the, uh, there's two files there. One for the 4.2.2 and one for the 4.2.7. So I'm actually, Crowdy actually thought of this. This is, this is cool. Um, so typically on, on a firmware update, what will usually happen is it'll just take a little bit longer to boot. Um, and then I know that it clearly has this weird thing, where it's like SKR boards, Big True, MKS, Big True Tech, they look for a thing called a, uh, a firmware.bin file, whereas uh, Creality, you got to sometimes rename the file. So let's see how this is taking a long time to load. Alright, there it goes. So you saw where it hummed before, it was way off when it hummed. Alright. 
Pro. Oh, except it's Chinese, man. What the hell? English. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do the auto home. I think it's on about under motion. Auto home. So I'm hoping now that this will be more towards the center. Ooh, that was nice. Fast jog. Alright, that looks perfect. All right, I'm gonna do a calibration cube, and um, actually, he has uh, some rubber seat on there. So um, I'm actually gonna open. Up, I'm gonna open this file. Let's make sure G29s first. G29 is bed leveling. So if you actually have uh, a BL touch, you should actually add the G29 command under the G28. So G28 is home. G29 is gonna be doing the bed leveling. All right, now that I um, I can't remember where it's at. Under since I don't really know. Um, I want to make sure the Z offset is zero. I don't want to save it because, you know, if you have your previous setting in there, because I mean, I just flash the firmware, but since I don't know where exactly it's at, you don't want to. You, I basically created a calibration cube with 30 script la layer lines. I'm going to dial them like that, but what you don't want is drive your, your hot end, your, your nozzle, right into your bed. So the first time I'm ever going to do that, I start at zero and I just bring it down with my flashlight. Alright, so it seems like the sweet spot for this printer, you can see it when it comes back, is about 2.6, 2.7, somewhere in there. Yeah, I don't like the rubber pads because it's hard to, I don't like having to fight two battles. You know, because you, you have a fixed bed mount, so you don't have to ever deal with adjusting these things. Okay, um, I could, yeah, I guess I could go to 2.7, but... Okay, now starting the cube part. All right, guys, there it is. I'd printed another one, but uh, it came off the bed and then it ran out of filament. So, it's a 0.1 millimeter layer height. That's super crisp. Looks pretty good. So, actually, I think this is probably one of the best upgrades you could do to an Ender 3. I mean, I've probably fixed about at least 40 or 40, I mean, 50, I don't know, a lot, a lot of Ender 3s. Tons of Creality printers. But this should work on any Creality printer with a, this style, like a frame style with the wheels. Um, yeah, because the Bowden setups are horrible. I mean, the Bowden tubes, I mean, they're just too inaccurate. They're just the retraction, but... Um, yeah, I'm actually thinking now this is probably the best upgrade you could do. You know, as a direct drive setup, you know. BL Touch on it, so. Alright, link down below if you want to take a look at it. Um, if you're in the Orange County area and you want me to look at your 3D printer, uh, oc3tech.com. But, alright, another printer fixed.